Hi, my name is Akil Ahmed. I'm an SSIS developer and I'm working on SSIS for the last six years. I'm working on it since uh, a SQL Server 2005 version. Okay, so uh, let's get started. The agenda of today's session is the basic introduction to the SSIS, variables, parameters and expressions in SSIS, SSIS task, containers and data flows. Okay. So what is SSIS? Basically, it is a platform for ETL operations. You know, Microsoft uh, provided a tool for if ETL operations that is called SQL Server Integration Services. It is installed as a feature of SQL Server. When you install the SQL Server, so there is an option for installing the SSIS as well, integration services. It is very useful for the database administrators, uh, those who want to you know import or export data to SQL Server. It is useful for the developers as well because they need to write some, some code for different purposes so they, they can use SSIS to you know maybe to import data or to schedule some script or something to run some scripts. Yeah, it is useful of, of course for data analysis as well. Those needs to analyze the data. Uh, DTS evolution. You know in SQL Server 2000 we, we had the DTS data transformation services. So in uh, SQL Server 2005, Microsoft introduced a new uh, you know a new concept of uh, SSIS. It is written from scratch. It is not a new version of DTS, but it is it's a new concept of SSIS. So they introduce a lot of features, like we can write code. You know, like in VB.NET, uh, uh, you know, after after SSIS 2005. Since 2008, R2, we have the option to write code in c .net as well. But in SSIS 2005, there was an option of writing, you know, .NET code in VB.NET, which was not available in the DTS. So there are lots, lots of new, uh, new tools. Those are available since SQL Server 2005. This is the architecture of SSIS. This is the image. So if you look at the center of this image, the yellow one, so the main, uh, you know, in SSIS, there is a file that is called package and all our code will, will, will be written, you know, will be situated in the package. So in, in any SSIS package, there will be some task and there will be some containers and data flow task. It is also a task, but it is specialized uh, it, uh, for, uh, you know, it, it's mainly used for uh, importing importing and exporting data from SQL Server to other source or from other source to SQL Server. So in data flow task, uh, we have some sources. We read, we read data from maybe from flat file or maybe from Excel source. And then optionally, we can do some transformation on the data while before loading it to destination. And then we have destination where we write our final data. On the left side, bottom left side, we have data sources. We can load our data from different sources like from Oracle, flat file, Excel file, XML file. Okay, so we have several data sources and we have log providers. SSI has provided the log providers, the inbuilt, inbuilt tasks, those we can use to log the uh, progress of the SSI package. It also gives our option uh, to write our custom custom task. Um, so, like some special in special cases, we can write some custom task as well. But most of the time, SSIS inbuilt tasks are enough to perform the operation. Then we have event handlers on the right, bottom right side. We have event handlers, so we can capture different events when our SSIS package will run for example we can we can capture the on pre execute before executing a task on pre execute event get called get fired and uh, like similarly when uh, when an error occurs in our SSIS package so on error event is got fired we have connection manager so for example to read to read data from flat file we need a connection 
to the flat file so that we can read the data so we have different connection managers available in the SSIs for reading data to different sources or writing data to different sources for example to read data from SQL server we can use either OLDB source or we can use SQL server source as well SQL sorry OLDB connection or SQL server connection and we have MSDB database so basically MSDB database can be used to store the SSIS packages you know we can deploy our SSIS packages after development to the MSDB database so it will store the packages and you know we can you know we can uh, we can run the packages from there as well so msdb is a uh, microsoft uh, um, it is a system database you know when we install the sql server so four databases are automatically automatically got created like the master database model database tabdb database and the msdb database so when we create any sql server agent job or we de deploy or we deploy any SSIS package so those information is got stored into msdb database and you know SSIS basically is an xml file so the extension of this uh, SSIS package is, is .dtsx okay and we have some wizard as well so suppose if we simply want to uh, load data from a source to some destination and we don't we don't want to do any transformation or something some other thing then we can use the wizards as well those those are very those are very helpful in you know moving the data and optionally after the wizard has been completed we can save the save the package as well from the wizard and you know then we have the designer like for designing for creating the SSS package so like uh, SSIS project basically it is a containers for the packages and the parameters basically SSIS parameters is a sorry package parameters in is a new concept in SSIS 2000, 2012 so we will look at that in the upcoming videos but for now project is a basically a container for the different packages you know we can create different packages for different uh, for different purposes for example for, for loading data from a csv file to sql server we can have one package and like for exporting data from sql server to maybe to oracle we can have another package and so on okay and uh, inside the ssis package we can uh, we can have different tasks and we can connect different tasks to each other so that uh, like the initially the first task will get executed and then the another one so you know we can connect the task to each other in the order in which we want to execute those so <clears throat> on top of the SSIS package there is a control flow so all the tasks those will exist in the SSIS package all will be situated in the control flow and basically it decide it decides the order of execution of all its components okay and then we have task Basi basically it is individual unit of works like for different purposes we have different tasks for example to run a sql query on sql server database we have execute sql task to create a flat file or to create a directory we have file system task and so on precedence constants basically precedence constants are the arrows those connect one task to another task and basically it you know it defines the workflow of the SSIS package okay and uh, we have a data flow task so basically for uh, importing and you know for exporting data from from any source to any other source data flow is the data flow task is used and in the data flow task we have some sources so for example if you need to read data from sql server then we have then we need to use the oldb source so we have different sources for reading the data from you know from a location and then we have we can have the transformation so with the help of transformation we can we can change the data on the on the fly before we write it to destination so 
uh, sometimes we don't need the transformation but sometimes we do it depends you know on the requirement then we have the destinations so in data flow task the third one is the destination so we, re we read data from one source then if required we do some transformation and then finally we we write that data to some destination okay then we have variables you know each each programming language have some variables so you know exercise variables can be used to store the value of uh, of something of some object uh, during the execution of the package for example we can store the number of records loaded to a sql server table in a exercise variable and then we can use that variable uh, to in the send will task to send to the group of people parameters so like we have parameters um, basically um, we have two types of parameters one are package parameters those are those can be used to provide values to the exercise package from outside of the exercise package when we run when we will run the package and and then we have some parameters those we can use to pass the values to a specific task like we can use parameters in the execute sql task to pass the value from uh, you know from some uh, exercise variable to the uh, execute sql task you know parameters can make a package you know dynamic and you know they can be set outside of the package there are there are different uh, you know um there are different features and you know benefits of the parameters parameters are new to ssis in sql server 2012 and you know they replace the capabilities of configuration so you know before ssis 2012 we have some we used to we we need to use some configurations like the most of the most popular configuration was XML configuration. So when we when we finished developing the SSIS package and before deploying the SSIS package to the uh, production server, we generated we generate the XML configuration file. And in the XML configuration file, we can change the connection strings of maybe of uh, a SQL server name or you know database name or you know maybe some folder path or file path. And then and another is uh, error handling and logging. So SSIS have some inbuilt features to log the errors and to log the progress of the SSIS package. We will look at this thing. And uh, this is import and export wizard. So you know uh, the easiest method to move the data is import and export wizard. It basically simply copy data from one source to another destination but we don't have much options in the import and export wizard so optionally we can save a package as well once we are done with the data movement and this is the sql server data tools window that that is basically used to create the ssis package on the left side this is the ssis toolbox toolbox that uh, contains several tasks those we those we need during um, development of the SSIS package and on the bottom side it is the variables pane we can create our SSIS variable here and it is the like connection managers pane so any connection manager like flat, fly, flat file connection manager or SQL, SQL server all connection managers will reside here and this is the data flow tab this one so when we when we create any data flow when we use any data flow task so you know to configure the data flow task we need to you know come here it is the control flow design surface so all the all the tasks and the containers will decide in the control flow this is the package level parameters so you know this is as as i earlier said this is new concept in sql server 2012 so we can have some package parameters and you know we can path we, we can pass the value of the SSIS package level parameters from outside of the package. So, you know, we can define some package parameters here, like maybe server name, database name, or folder name. And, you know, while running the package, we can provide the values from here. One important thing that we, we need to remember that we cannot modify the value of the package parameter from the SSIS package itself. So, suppose if we have given a suppose if we have given a value for example localhost to the sql server server name 
so we cannot change that value inside the SSIS package. Okay, then we have the event handler step. So we can we can look for any like events. So if we want to configure any events like on error events, so we need to go to here and then you know we need we need to write our code. This this is package explorer. So we can we can you know expand and see the progress of the package when the package will run and on the right side this is the solution explorer so all the SSIS packages will be you know will reside here we can add and remove and delete rename packages from here this is the properties pane so from here we can change the properties of different tasks and containers and even for the SSIS package as well so so that's it for the uh, so, so some basic understanding and in the upcoming video uh, we will going to learn the you know the SSIS by uh, the practical examples okay so th that's all for now and uh, if you like the video please uh, click the like button and please subscribe to our channel okay thanks thank you take care